Welcome to the Steps of Baking series. In this 13 part video series, we take a closer look at each individual step of the bread baking process. From weighing out your ingredients, to cooling down your bread after baking. Each of these steps is just as important as the next, and all of them will affect the end result. So in this video, we'll talk about folding. Folding is a step taken during bulk fermentation. You may have heard of punching your dough down whilst it's fermenting. By folding, you are punching it down. You are releasing the gas from the dough. But it does get a lot more beneficial than just punching down. Folding can equalize the temperature of your dough. If your kitchen is cold and your dough gets cool on the outside, stays warm on the inside, by folding, you are distributing that temperature evenly. That will give you an even fermentation. Folding also strengthens the dough. As you fold, you create tension in the dough and more layers in the gluten structure. This is quite important for high hydration doughs and especially important in dough made by hand. And as most of my videos are for handmade dough, this is a very important step. Now there are various methods of folding depending on what kind of dough you are working with. The dough can be folded either out on the table or in the bowl. You may need to use flour or you may rub your table with some water to prevent your dough from sticking. Or if the dough is dry enough, you may not need any flour. The main thing to remember is not to use too much flour or too much water when folding your dough. You don't want to add any liquid or any flour to the recipe. So in this example, the dough is a bit sticky, so I use a little bit of flour. And to perform the fold, I placed it smooth side down on the table, I stretched it out, and I just folded it up in many layers. Once it's folded, tighten it against the table, keep it smooth side up, place it back into the bowl, and continue fermenting. And that's a basic fold. Now let's look at this high hydration dough, to which I'm adding some olives. This dough is quite sticky and stretchy, so I'm using wet hands, I'm adding my olives now, and I'm folding the dough inside the bowl. And this is another benefit of folding, you can add ingredients. If you try to mix in the olives whilst you are kneading your dough, you will impact the dough structure and the dough will take on the color of the olives, which may not look very good. So adding ingredients like olives or nuts at this point is very useful. Now let's look at another type of fold for a very high hydration dough. This is called a coil fold. To create the layers in the dough, you release it from the bowl and you roll it underneath itself in a coil, as the name suggests. Always do this a couple of times, turn the bowl and repeat, and use wet hands to prevent sticking. Here's an example of a quite a dry dough, which does not require any flour on the table. Drier doughs are generally strong enough that they don't require any folds, but this will achieve the effect that punching down would, and I do like to fold my dough at least once during the bulk fermentation. And as it's not sticky, you don't need flour, you tighten it against the table as always, place it back into the bowl and continue fermenting. Various doughs require various numbers of folds and it's important to note that every subsequent fold should be performed more gently than the previous one. In this example, it's a sourdough ciabatta and it's on its third fold and I'm handling very gently because I don't want to knock out any of the fermentation gases. Now let's talk about number of folds and when to fold. A dry dough with a short fermentation time, may benefit only from one fold. But on the other hand, a wet dough, like a high hydration ciabatta or focaccia or pizza dough, may require more folds. In this example, we're making a sourdough focaccia, which will take four folds during bulk fermentation. As you incorporate more folds into the dough, the resulting bread will have more volume. It's important to note that if your dough was mixed in a mixer, it's quite strong already, then more folds will be most likely detrimental to the structure of the dough, so don't overdo it. Now let's talk about folding intervals. It's important to perform every fold at equal intervals during the bulk fermentation stage. That way you will have a rhythm. The dough will have an equal amount of time between folds to relax again before the next fold and also to proof. So if, for example, you are making dough that requires three hours of bulk fermentation and you decide that it needs three folds, for instance, then you should give it three folds at 45 minute intervals. 
so that after the last fold, it has 45 more minutes to proof and relax before you divide it and pre-shape it. And as you may have noticed in this particular focaccia, I had some oil in the bowl when I was performing the first fold. Folding is a great way of adding ingredients, so the oil was incorporated into the dough by folding. And as I mentioned before, with the ciabatta, every subsequent fold has to be performed more gently than the previous one. As the dough is filling up with gas, it gets more fragile, and you don't want to knock that gas out. And that's folding, in short. It's up to you to decide and judge if your dough needs any folds, and how many if it does. But it's definitely a very beneficial step to take. There's a couple types of doughs that don't require folding. If your dough is really dry and stiff, you'd probably be better off just degassing it. And if you're making a rye bread, which is literally just mixing ingredients and placing them in a basket to proof, then folds don't benefit at all. But as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. Check out my Instagram. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.